am at once a physician, a citizen, and a woman, and I am not willing to stand aside and allow this concept of expendable human lives to turn this great land of ours into just another exclusive reservation where only the perfect, the privileged, and the planned have the right to live. The number one killer in the black community is the direct and intentional killing of a human life inside the black woman's womb. Race became an issue in the reproductive health care debate with the introduction of Margaret Sanger and Clarence Gamble's Negro Project in 1939 that sought to bring about a major birth rate reduction among American Negroes. We do believe that more than anything else, abortion is racism. It is a way of pruning, if you will, the black population. There's a target on the black community as well as other minorities, and we're saying that it's black genocide. It is time for us to wake up and stop this Holocaust. We know that life begins at uh, conception. Abortion is black genocide. According to the Centers for Disease Control, over 19 million unborn black children have been aborted since Roe v. Wade was decided in 1973. What we've seen every year for the last several decades is about 60 million innocent pre-born babies killed on the planet Earth. It's a global holocaust and war against babies. But what happens to the soul of a nation when we allow thousands of babies to be aborted every day? My son was born a little less than six months. He was born 2.1 pounds when he came into the world. I think I'm holding my son in the palm of my right hand down to 1.9. I think I'm holding him for the last time. Hmm. And that's when God answered my prayer. And he simply said, Walter, this is what's supposed to be on the inside of a woman. And at that point, I knew. I bought that story that it was to help my community and that it would make a stronger community. But when I realized that those were little babies, not lumps of flesh, as we were told so many times, then I knew that we were harming not just the babies, not our own bodies, but our communities and our faith. My birth mom experienced the horror and the violence of rape but rejected the further violence of abortion. I'm not the residue of the rapist. I'm the resilience of my birth mom. Will ending abortion solve all the problems in our community? Of course not. But we will not solve any problem in our community while abortion still exists. This is the beginning of a new civil rights movement. And I want you to know that you are part of a movement of hope. This is an extension of the civil rights movement. This is the human rights movement of our day. Abortion is the civil rights fight of our day. And we'll keep marching until Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton are finally trampled under our feet. And so my challenge was to men, including myself, to stand up for these women and also to stand for the pre-born. Our ancestors did not break the chains of slavery. They didn't escape the plantations and the cotton field just so we could actually then take power and give it to political people who are there to wipe us out. Black, white, Republican, Democrat, male or female, because we know that in unity we must fight. All of you, regardless of your race, regardless of your ethnic group, I would encourage you to join the voices of those long ago. Frederick Douglass is not alive today. Harriet Tubman is not alive today. Those many great leaders are not alive today. But I, along with my husband, Dr. James J. Thompson, Jr., and millions across this great nation, we take up the torch where they left off, and we say, let the slaves go free.